Hi everyone, this is Manor of Death. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to this video. I just wanted to give you a little heads up that I'm feeling kind of sick right now, so if my voice is sort of weird, that's why. Sorry about that in advance. I just wanted to get this video out there and it's not been getting really better, so I figured I might as well get it done. Thank you so much and sorry about the audio in my voice. Also, this week's Manner of Death is Undetermined and Homicide. Naylor Road, John Doe, 2020. On October 4th, 2020, a black male was found inside a home along Naylor Road in Washington, D.C. He was thought to be between the ages of 50 to 70 years old, stood around 5 foot 4 and weighed 160 pounds. He also had black hair and brown eyes. Unfortunately, none of the neighbors or the homeowners of the house he was found in could identify Naylor Road John Doe. If you have any information that could help solve Naylor Road John Doe's case, please contact the DC office of the Chief Medical Examiner at 202-698-9000. There is also a crowdfunding page on DNA Doe Project to help pay for Naylor Road John Doe's lab fees. If you would like to donate, I have linked the page below in the description. Sierra County Baby Jane Doe, 1982. In February of 1982, a Sierra Pacific Power Company worker fetched a black garbage bag floating in the Truckee River near the Flash Dam. To the worker's horror, upon opening the bag, they discovered the body of a white female infant. Baby Jane Doe was discovered wrapped in a pink or red towel. She was determined to have been dead at the scene. She was described as being an infant less than a year old who weighed 4 pounds and was 16 inches in length. She also had brown hair. This case is being handled by the Washoe County Coroner's Office, who also filed this case into NamUs, or the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, under the case number UP7400. It wasn't until 2022 that the Sierra County Sheriff's Office partnered with Othram Labs to see if a close DNA match could be found of Baby Jane Doe. Currently, Sierra County Baby Jane Doe has a crowdfunding page available on dnasolves.com to help pay for the lab fees. If you would like to donate, I will leave a link in the description below. If you have any information that could help find Sierra County Baby Jane Doe's identity, please contact the Sierra County Sheriff's Office at 530-289-3700. Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner, John Doe, 1992. In August of 1992, there was a couple walking in a wooded region by Orinoco Road in Milford when they stumbled upon the remains of a man close by some railroad tracks. The unidentified male had been wrapped in several blankets, one being pink and one being an olive-toned color. There was also two green plastic trash bags used to conceal the remains. The location where John Doe was found was not used often by walkers, which explains why he had not been discovered previously. John Doe is described as being potentially Asian and between the ages of 18 to 25 years of age. It is also thought he stood between 5 foot 3 and 5 foot 6 and weighed somewhere in the range of 120 to 140 pounds. There is no description given of his hair and eye color. It's thought he potentially died about one to two months prior, based on the rate of decomposition his body had gone through. Medical examiners ruled his death a homicide, and that the cause of his death was two gunshot wounds to the head. It is not believed that he lived in the local area, nor was he killed in the location he was found. Items found near him were four small caliber gray metal bullets, a long sleeve button-down shirt with the logo Forever on the left chest pocket, a size extra large 14 to 16 fruit of the loom vest type undershirt, size 27 waist jeans, brown belt and yellow buckle, and a size 30 to 32 fruit of the loom white jockey underwear. An unusual feature during the autopsy investigation revealed that John Doe's teeth had all erupted and there was no sign of cavities or any sort of restoration done to his teeth. Even with so much information, not much has been made in headway of John Doe's case. A case was entered into NamUs, which is under case number UP9242, 
but it has so far not brought any solid leads to his identity. In 2022, the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner partnered with Othram Labs to create a DNA profile that could help solve his case. A crowdfunding page has been set up on dnasolves.com if you would like to donate to help towards John Doe's lab fees. I will link that page in the description below. If you have any information that could help solve John Doe's identity, please contact the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner at 860-679-3980. Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner 1998 John Doe, also known as Saybrook John Doe. In March of 1998, a group of fishermen found the body of an unidentified male in the Connecticut River near Old Saybrook, Connecticut. The exact location of the discovery was 400 yards offshore of the Harbor One Marina in Saybrook Point. This was where a shoe was discovered. The police were called and the rest of the remains of the John Doe were collected. The Coast Guard and the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection was also involved in the initial investigation. An anthropologist and dental forensic expert examined the remains and determined that John Doe was white, possibly of Latino ethnicity, and 30 to 35 years old. He is also described to have been 5 foot 8 in height and weighed 200 pounds. There was no way to know what his hair or eye color were based on the condition he was found in. It's most likely he had passed about a year prior to his discovery. The condition of his remains also indicate that he was in a marshy area before moving downstream to Old Saybrook. This gives an indication of where he might have initially died and could help solve his case. Some articles of clothing were collected at the scene, including a coat with a purple zipper, pair of black pants, pair of black socks, and a size 9.5 pair of Fila sneakers. A silver butane lighter was also found with a design of an eagle standing in a, glove, in a globe and the number 2688 on it as well. Saber John Doe is featured in Nameless under the case number UP1821. He is also in a cold case deck of playing cards as the Nine of Hearts and even featured on America's Most Wanted website. With all this, there is still no substantial leads to his identity. Luckily, in 2022, the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner partnered with Authorm to conduct DNA testing. They currently have a donation page on their website to help raise money to pay for the lab fees. If you would like to donate, I have left a link in the description. If you have any information that could help Saybrook John Doe's case, please contact the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiners at 860 679 3980. Poinsett County John Doe, 2001. In August of 2001, a fisherman was fishing in a ditch off the St. Francis River in Marked Tree, Arkansas, when he found what looked to be a partial skull. The exact location of the skull was near a wooded area close by the river in the area of the old siphons on Lock and Dam Road. Unfortunately, no other remains were found when the area was searched which could have helped identify Poinsett County John Doe. Some DNA testing has been conducted, which found the John Doe to be a black male, probably between the age of 16 to 19 years old at the time of his death. Even with this information presented from the DNA testing, it was limited since nothing else could be deduced, such as eye color, hair color, weight, or height. There were signs of a healed fracture to the John Doe's nose, but they could not decipher when that injury happened in relation to his death. There was unfortunately no teeth recovered at the scene either, so no dental records could be provided. Investigators definitely believe homicide could be a potential manner of death in his case. With so little information, law enforcement has still been proactive by having a sketch rendered of Poinsett County John Doe, and he is also listed in NamUs under case number UP5876. In 2023, the Poinsett County Sheriff's Office partnered with Authorm Labs to conduct advanced DNA testing in order to perform genetic genealogy and hopefully solve the identity of this John Doe. There's a donation page up for Poinsett County John Doe on dnasolves.com, which I will list below in the description if you would like to contribute.
If you have any information that could help solve his case, please call the Poinsett County Sheriff's Department at 870-578-5411. That's 870-578-5411, with the referencing agency case number being P01-5401. Lyon County, Neosho Rapids, John Doe. In April of 2017, a skull had been discovered near the banks of the Neosho River after recent rainfall had occurred in Lyon County, Kansas. The remains were found in a black trash bag and were wrapped inside of a bedsheet and comforter. A watch was also discovered in the bag as well. The body belonged to a man whose hair was either blonde, white, or gray and about 6 to 8 inches in length. It is also thought that Neosho Rapids John Doe was a middle-aged man who had scoliosis and was about 5 foot 5 inches in height. It is also thought that the year of his death was somewhere between 2013 and 2016. The race, eye color, and weight could not be determined for him. In August of 2017, the case was entered into NamUs under the case number UP 16928. Since then, the Lyon County Sheriff's Department have not been successful in finding the identity of Neosho Rapids John Doe. In 2023, Lyon County Sheriff's Department partnered with Othram Labs so DNA testing could occur to hopefully discover the identity of Neosho Rapids John Doe. If you would like to help contribute to this John Doe's lab fees, you can donate to the crowdfunding page that I have linked in the description. If you have any information that could help solve his identity, please contact the Lyon County Sheriff's Department at 620-341-3205 and referencing agency case L17-04-1641 LY. Delaware County Jane Doe 2022. In March of 2022, the body of an unidentified woman was found in a shallow grave in Deshong Park in Chester, Pennsylvania. Strangely, an artist was filming a movie in that park when a homeless man came up to him to tell him he, quote, knew where a body was, quote. This is when the Chester police were called to excavate a portion of the park close by the intersection of East 11th Street and Wells Street. The FBI was also involved. It's stated that, unfortunately, that area has commonly become an illegal dumping ground. Delaware County Jane Doe was described as a black female who was thought to be over 60 at the time of her death. She had a height of 5 foot, weighed 117 pounds, and had black hair. She is also described to have an Aquarius tattoo on her left breast. Her manner of death is homicide, and the cause of death was blunt force injury to the neck. Unfortunately, no clothing or other personal items were discovered at the scene. The following month in April of 2022, the case was entered into NamUs under the number UP90745. Now in 2023, the Delaware County Medical Examiner Office have partnered with Authram to conduct DNA testing on Jane Doe in order to help find her identity. There is a crowdfunding page up on their website so if you'd like to help donate towards the lab fees, I will link it in the description. If you have any information that could help identify Delaware County Jane Doe, please contact the Delaware County Medical Examiner Office at 610-891-5950 and reference case ME2022-0521. Hey everyone, it's Manor of Death. I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me and my channel and for watching my videos. I really do appreciate all of you. Remember when I suggest that you may go donate to these cases, it's just a suggestion and just something you can do if you'd like. Know that by spreading awareness of these cases, you are also helping them. So it's not only monetary help, but also just awareness that really helps solve these cases. Thank you so much for everything, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!